If you've been following my hammock escapades over the past few months, you'll know that I've been playing around with trying to get a decent, reliable layer of thermal insulation underneath me. I've tried a sleeping mat, that didn't work. I've tried and I'm experimenting with using an overquilt as an underquilt, the jury's still out on that. However, I was speaking to the guy that makes my hammocks, Chris, and he's made me this. It's a double skin hammock, and I think it's gonna solve my problem. Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor, and as always, a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel, The Bushcraft Padawan. So for those of you new to my hammock escapades over the past few months, let me give you a really quick potted history as to what's led to this video today. I've got an incredibly lightweight, Parasilk hammock. It's the one that you can see my son currently modeling in the woods right now on the screen. That's brilliant, mega lightweight, but when I put a sleeping mat inside it, it slips and slides all over the place. Plan B was to use an overquilt as an underquilt, and the jury's still out on that. I'm still tinkering around with modifying that to work. But I was speaking to the guy, Chris, who makes my hammocks, and as I said earlier, he's come up and made me this double layered hammock. The concept of this is rather than having one piece of material underneath me, I have two. And those two pieces of material naturally form a pocket, they form a compartment into which, as at least the theory says, I can slide my sleeping mat in between those two layers, therefore it can't possibly slide out from underneath me because the layers are locking it in. So I've come out to the woods for the very first time, I only received this yesterday, I've taken it out of the bag in the house, it hasn't actually been out in the wild until in a few minutes time. So I've come out today along with my Thermarest to see just how this is gonna work, whether it's gonna be reliable enough and whether it's gonna keep that Thermarest locked underneath me, meaning that I no longer have to rely on the overquilt, which as I said previously, was slightly more bulky than taking out my Thermarest mat. That's the plan, that's the theory. Theoretically it should work, people online in various groups that I'm a member of talk about the fact that this can work, but of course, no plan survives contact with the enemy, so, Let's get this up and let's see if the, uh, if the theory works out practically. Folks, that's it set up in terms of the basic hang. I'm just gonna make sure that, uh, that I've got it at the right height. My feet can just about touch the floor, and they can. Not a bad first hang, that, I think. Sitting quite nicely. So I've not put the thermo rest in at the moment, just the basic hang, just wanted to make sure that th this was set up correctly. I might just raise the straps ever so slightly, maybe another two or three inches up the tree. Just because this, although no, to be honest, no, I think I'm gonna leave it. I think I'm gonna leave it. I was reading that this uh, this structural guy line really needs to be, be incredibly tight, but actually I've been doing some more reading and as long as you can get a, ever such a slight bend, but not quite 90 degrees in it, when you pinch it between your fingers, which I've probably got about 45 degrees there, that's absolutely fine. So very happy with the way that this is this is hanging, but of course I, I didn't buy a hammock to hang it. I've got a hammock that does it already. I bought a hammock to put that thermo rest into the integral pocket of. So let me show you a close up of that integral pocket and how that works. Then let's get the thermo rest in there. Let's get you nice and close in so you can see this. So here's the, the inner fabric. This is what I would lay on. Here's the bottom fabric here. You can do it clearly see, hopefully, there's a slightly different tone, darker green, more of a grey green on the inside. And then of course, because they're two separate layers that have been stitched together, he's actually left this opening here. I would say it's maybe about two foot, that opening, with a press stud closure there, for that firmer rest to actually go inside. So, 
Let's leave that open. Let me grab the thermarest. My glamorous assistant has insisted that she hands the thermarest over. I think she, this is going to be a big moment on camera. So she's just staggering into shot now. I think she realises that she's out of shot. You can only see her knees. But there's a the thermarest, fully inflated. There's the sleeve for it to be inserted into. Let's get this done. So the good news is it's wide enough. I inserted the head end first, which is the, the wider part of the thermo rest. That's going in just fine. There we go, it's in. It's in, do the pouch, the pouch up there, the sleeve up, the pocket, whatever you want to call it. That little press stud. And that thermo rest is now in there. That is not going in terms of the hammock anywhere. It's locked in. The only way that's going to go anywhere is if the entire hammock stitching fails, and it, and it just falls apart. That's the only way that's going anywhere unless I choose to move it out. The hammock is wide enough for me to manoeuvre this to be a diagonal lay, so I'm just gonna, just gonna do that now. I've shuffled that around so it's lying diagonally. So I guess the acid test now is that, there I am, that I get my backside into here, shuffle around a little bit and make sure that it does actually lie underneath me when I'm lying diagonally the acid test. Just going to pop the old shoes off. Uh. Get my carcass in here. because that feels a bit odd, it feels a bit odd. I think I suspect, well, I suspect I know why. I'm talking with my back tier there. I think it's because I've massively inflated the thermo rest. And of course, as you may know, I prefer to have a little bit of air out the thermo rest. Some tweaking needed. Just letting a bit of air out. There we go. Let's do the sleeve back up. Aha! That's it, that's the badger. That's the badger. So the problem there was, I had too much of the thermo rest at one end and not the other. Um, there was too much of it behind me and not enough at the foot end. And also it was inflated to the max. So I've taken a bit of air out, probably take a little bit more out as well actually. Um, but that's lay, I can feel that underneath me. I can actually feel its resistance against my backside and my thighs and the small of my back as I'm sitting up. Uh, and it's, I can feel the support that it's giving me, so clearly it's, it's there, it's in place because it's supporting me. The knotty mods as well, these things on the edge that you may have just seen me tinkering around with. This is a way of being able to tension and to, to pull in the sag, the inevitable sag that forms around the edge of the hammock. This allows me to, to, to take in that excess sag and it cinches up at this end and at this end and brings in that excess sag. Uh, helps to cocoon you a little more, helps to stop things falling out the hammock. Chris had put these into the Mark 1 version that I got and they, they were there, they functionally they worked but once you actually got in them they, the, the, uh, the, the cordage kind of pulled through the, the stop lock I gave that feedback to him, and fair play to him, he's implemented some sort of change. I think he's made it more in structural into the hem of this by the look of it, um, but nothing. Uh, th this, this hasn't moved. I've cinched it up, 
it hasn't pulled through, it hasn't moved at the head end nor at the foot end. So well done on working on that feedback Chris, always good to see a manufacturer that, that listens to the end user product feedback and, and implements it and implements it very quickly as well. Gleaming, very happy indeed. The proof will be in the pudding of course when I come out to do an overnighter. Um, fingers crossed I don't end up on the floor like I did first time. That was nothing to do with a hammock at all. That was to do with the fact that I was trying to use a thermarest in a hammock um, without thinking about the, the factor of things sliding around and, and slipping and sliding out. So no, no downside on the Mac 1 of the hammock at all. It was just my lack of, of, of experience and my naivety about how a, um, a thermarest sleeping mat and a hammock would work together or wouldn't work together. Hence the Mark II version. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a little bit more market research to do. Hopefully the kids are entertaining themselves. I can't hear anybody crying or screaming yet, so clearly they're not that bored yet. So if you give me a few minutes, I'm just gonna, all in the name of market research, just have a little lie down. Been laid here about two minutes maximum. And one of the great things about the, the Thermarest Neo Air Extern that I've got is that it, it reflects your body heat back to you. So it doesn't just stop the heat from the ground or your, your, your body heat dissipating into the ground or the cold from the ground permeating your body. It actually, because of a, the, the way it's constructed, don't get, me, don't get me involved in the science of it, but because of the way that it's constructed, it reflects the heat, your own heat back at you and I can feel it doing this already, just in a couple of minutes, I can feel the heat from the back of my thighs and the back of my calves being reflected back. Those parts of my body feel significantly warmer than the other parts. So absolutely can confirm that this isn't slipping about inside at all. Um, it's doing its job. Um, I will say again, proof is in the pudding when I come up to actually do an overnight, but, but already just having that thermo rest under there it isn't slipping and I can feel it, I can feel it at work. So another tick in the box. Now back to my market research. So that's my initial opinion, but of course my initial opinion is one thing. Let's get the chief product tester into here and see what they have to say. Perfect, the most comfortable hammock in the world. On a scale from 1 to 10, I would give it a 10. I'm really quite annoyed with myself at the moment that I'm not planning, planning an overnighter for tonight because I would have loved to have seen how, the, uh, how that hammock and the, the thermo rest in that sleeve actually gets on for real. But unfortunately, I need to get back. I've also realised as well that only a week and a half after having a knee operation, even walking 500 metres from the car park into the woods and another 500 metres back is going to be too much at this point in time. So my knee is screaming at me at the moment. It's agony. So I need to get back to the car, get back home, uh, get some painkillers. Chris, thank you very much for, uh, for, for, for working with me to develop that, um, that, that second version of the hammock. For those of you that are watching this that are considering hammocking, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Do please check out Chris's Facebook page, his Instagram page, and I can't think if he's got anything else anywhere else. But I'll post everything that I know about his site in the description below on YouTube. I'm not affiliated to Chris. I don't get commission. I don't get anything free or anything like that. I pay, uh, quite rightly, for the products that, that he sells. He's incredibly um, savvy. He's incredibly communicative. He will work with you. Uh, and talk to you about what it is that you need and why you need it um, and come up with what he's come up with me there which, is a, which has been as a result of feedback, me having conversations with him and him working to put a product together. So if you're thinking about getting a hammock, you could do worse than at least having a conversation with Chris and checking out what he does. He's homegrown, he's a UK um, cottage business, he's, he's, he's building his own brand, he's building his own business and I say all power to his elbow and his sewing machine pedal foot so uh, so thank you very much Chris thanks again for tuning into the video do keep watching these videos because in the very near future knee permitting I will be back out in the woods for an overnighter testing that very hammock out for real 
If you've got a few minutes to spare, appearing upon the screen now, you can see a link to one of my more recent videos, which is a navigation technique that sadly gets so overlooked, but is probably the most effective one that I can think of in terms of stopping you going too far wrong. Why not check that video out? And if you're not yet a subscriber, there's a little reminder at the bottom of the screen about what you can do about that. See you in the next video, folks. Cheers.